we're going to go for a little journey uh, together. So you found, you found yourself running uh, a technical project, which might take you know, months, maybe even years to get finished. Uh, and by that, I mean um, a project that's focused on a technical deliverable as opposed to uh, a direct business impact. So for example, maybe uh, an effort to automate tests or deployment pipeline or upgrading a language or a framework to the latest version or God forbid, a rewrite. <laughs> so maybe you need to migrate off some tech debt uh, written code uh, that was left without maintenance for so long that now it's super hard to change uh, or risk it to make any changes. So that's super scary, but you, you have to do that. Um, to make it clear, this project is not an exercise in technology. You know your team and your company depend on that uh, to deliver their goals. Um, so I'm assuming here that this is not a decision to try out or experiment uh, with new technology for the sake of it. But the work itself uh, might still be too hard to explain. Uh, there might be too, you know, there are too many uh, behind the scene changes, uh, not enough user-facing user changes that you can point to uh, and explain what you're doing. So that makes uh, communicating the progress that you're, you're, you're having with this project to people who aren't implementing those changes every day really hard. Uh, so yeah, in this talk, I'm gonna give you some ideas on how to communicate with the rest of your team and your company when you're engaged in a project like that. So here's some of the goals that you might have. So as a developer running a long-term technical project, in order to get my project prioritized and running, I want to tie my project to business goals and opportunities. Another goal might be, in order to make sure the project gets finished, uh, I want to communicate progress to the wider company. Uh, and that means others who might not understand the technical details of what we're doing. And another goal, uh, as a developer running a long-term technical project, I want, in order to keep my team happy and motivated, I want to celebrate as we progress. So we don't want anyone quitting uh, because of this. <laughs> Um, in order to start communicating clearly and achieving those goals, uh, I think you need three things first. So the first one is a goal. So tie your technical project to a clear goal that's aligned to business impact. So this is why you're doing this uh, work, but most importantly, what you as a company and as a business uh, will be able to do once this project is finished. Set uh, incremental steps. Uh, with a milestone, so break down the project as much as you can to be able to, to deliver it. And for each of those steps, you define uh, milestones. So each step should deliver some kind of business impact, even if it is just within your engineering team uh, to improve efficiency and, and how you're delivering code. Uh, and though having those milestones will help you know how far you're progressing with your project to know how far you are from finishing it. And they can also serve as a point to reevaluate uh, the project and reset expectations. If it's running late, or maybe context or priorities changed, you can use that uh, milestone as a checkpoint. And ideally, a cool project name, <laughs> or at least a recognizable one. I don't know if I had cool project names, but definitely recognizable ones. Um, once you have that, repeat yourself. <laughs> so it's not going to be after like this one magical half hour PowerPoint presentation that you're gonna make, that you're gonna get the buy-in and, and the support that you need to do this project. It will take time and persistence and it will take you, uh, it will require you to repeat your message multiple times. So have a clear message when you're communicating. Uh, you should adapt it based on the audience. So if you're talking to, to technical people or non-technical people, but when possible, use always you know, the same words and the same message, the diagrams for all communications that you have. Uh, there is a lot of power in getting everyone speaking the same language. So everyone in your company should know your project and its main goal, uh, even for a technical project. So because it's tied to the business goal, you can phrase it in terms of business outcomes and what it enables. And then you repeat that every opportunity. So uh, to your team, to other departments, internal communications like blogs or wiki, uh, all hands, demo days, just make sure that you get the message out. Uh, so now I'm going to go through some examples of how to communicate before the project, during it, and then when the project is finished. So before you start, create excitement about this new world uh, and what it will look like once, once this is done. So it's not about making the code not bad or fixing slow tests or moving to the cloud. 
This is about, about what you'll be able to do once this background work is done. So make it about how this project will be a transformation to, to your company, to the business. First um, way to do that is using metaphors. Uh, it really helps to communicate complex concepts. So I've used Porter's house, urban planning, gardening, personal hygiene. Uh, all of those kind of try to help uh, explain how a code base can deteriorate over time. And then sometimes you might need uh, to put on extra effort to get into to a better place. So find the right metaphor that will resonate with the people in your company. Um, so this is a way, red-green diagram, <laughs> is what I call it. But it's a diagram that highlights areas of problems uh, in, in your application, the applications that you have. So it doesn't have to be super detailed. I use it a couple of times. It's really a rough drawing, just slightly more detailed than this one, uh, with lots of boxes uh, for applications, and then red indicating danger or areas that are difficult to change, and green indicating maintainable projects. Um, it works to give a sense of which projects are harder to change um, uh, and use legacy technology. So basically, ma anything in red would be, we need to work on it and make it better. Uh, maybe you can use orange to mean this is in progress, uh, and then green once everything is good and, and, and can be worked as is. And having the green areas really helped the weather company understand which areas were easier to change so that we could focus the near-term goals of the business in those areas while we're making the, the red ones uh, better. And then the counterpart to it, the magic wand diagram. So this is not a future diagram because that might not be uh, as clear uh, to you as you start the project. This represents what you'd like um, the present to be if you had a magic wand. So if we could change everything today, what it, what it would look like, what systems would you have, and how would they be designed or architected with the business needs of today? So with the red-green diagram showing the current state and then the magic wand showing the ideal state, together they can help you define uh, the steps in between and what guiding principles you're gonna use to get there. So the, the, the steps uh, of your project. Um, yeah, we know maintaining software has a cost. Uh, but maybe that's not very clear to, to the wider company. So once uh, an application is running in production and released, everyone else that's not working on it day to day and seeing all the bugs and error messages coming up, maybe they forget it exists, right? So find ways to, to highlight that cost. Uh, at my previous job, again, we have built many applications throughout the years. Some of them were working on it, some of them we weren't. They were just you know, happily ticking along. But it wasn't always clear what level of maintenance they were expected to have uh, and whether they should exist at all. So the, the red-green diagram kind of helped, but it wasn't comprehensive. So I started a list of every application that we had in inventory, <coughs> uh, and it was quite eye-opening to see the amount of code we had. Uh, and then together with the product manager, we defined their level of maintenance, uh, reviewing it every quarter. Uh, yeah, code is only really finished once it's not running in production anymore, so make sure that the code that you have is bringing enough value to justify the cost of maintaining it. And if not, delete it. Um, again, at the same job, um, the previous job that I had with our product owner and design leads, we wanted to, we went for a process of identifying the company's main proposition. So why, why did users keep kept coming back to our product and using it? Uh, at that time, we had a bloated product with lots and lots of features that we wanted to simplify. So once we had that proposition, the main proposition, we classified features that power that proposition as the bones features. What were improvements on that, the muscle, and then what we built but have since learned uh, is not as valuable as we thought it was, we called it fat features. So this framework of uh, bones, muscle, fat is a way for us to identify the value of features in a product. Going through this process is very hard, uh, but extremely useful to understand and agree on what was important and what wasn't. So ask yourself this question, if you're starting over today, what would you, what would you build again, uh, knowing what you know now? If you wouldn't build something, delete that. <laughs> so using that framework, you have a shared understanding of what to keep and what to delete, and this can greatly reduce the scope of your technical project, allowing you to finish it sooner if you have to migrate you know, less code. So during the project, there'll be lots of behind the scene uh, technical changes when you're running it, so don't forget this is a company-wide project. Keep going back to that goal and updating the team with the project, and with the progress, and reminding everyone why you're doing this work. So there are two audiences that you need to keep in mind. One is the wider company, so it's hard to get people excited about a burndown chart. Uh, <laughs> so find other ways to, to communicate and celebrate uh, what you've achieved. 
and the other audience is your team. So they'll be doing lots of, of difficult, complex behind the scene work. Um, and there are so many uncertainties, but one thing is for sure, it's definitely gonna take longer than you think, even when you take that into account. And I learned recently that there's a law for that. So <laughs> it always takes longer than you expect, even when you take into account Hofstadter's law. So that's the Hofstadter's law. Uh, so it's important to keep tracking progress, even small wins, to keep your team motivated and engaged. So one way of doing that is updating that red and green diagram uh, and keep going back to it. And as you make uh, applications go green, uh, keep a history of it so you know how you're progressing. If your part of your project includes removing lots of code, track progress of that. So uh, graph lines of deleted code or have your top deleters in your list um, in your team. Uh, and I, I think, I don't know if it's still going on, but I heard that Facebook gave out t-shirts called uh, Dead Code Society, which sounds really cool. If you deleted more than a thousand lines of code, sounds like a great idea. Um, and given you have your goals and your steps and your milestones, you can create a game out of it. And that's what we did at Songcake. So our incredible product designer, Karim, created a game around the rewrite of an application that we're doing. So we were using the Stranglers pattern, uh, coined by Martin Fowler, so as opposed to completely rewriting the application from scratch and releasing it in one big bang, we were re rewriting feature by feature and releasing it as, as we progressed until the legacy project was gone. <coughs> so here are some, uh, Karim mapped the team's goals and metrics to badges and achievements. So here are some of my favorites, the table smasher for number of deprecated tables that got removed. Uh, and then my, my extra favorite one, which is the, the force shift. So this is percentage of usage of the new application versus the legacy one. So the more we rewrite and, and start the new application being used, the force balance shifts. Uh, and there was a, a little game hero. Uh, and those were printed where the team sat, uh, and each achievement had a party popper, so every time someone achieved one, everyone in the office would know. Uh, so it's super, super exciting. Um, once you're done, uh, celebrate decommissioning whole products. Uh, have a party, really. I mean, it takes a whole company to decide and migrate users and decommission a whole product if you're doing that, so celebrate with everyone. I heard about donuts for decom, pizza, fancy drinks with little umbrellas, whatever. Just make sure that it is a splash and it gets get everyone involved. Uh, and uh, on a more somber note, uh, when we finally decommissioned a very, very long running rewrite of a project, we celebrated but with a, an obituary. So this is the, <laughs> the application. <laughs> near uh, our office at the time, and it was written by the original developer and product manager of, of that project. It was a celebration of a new beginning, but it was also acknowledging uh, all the great value that that project had, had brought to the company, so it was actually quite sweet. So <laughs> when this daunting project is, <laughs> I love it, <laughs> I, I said that, so anyway. Um, when this daunting project is finally over, use that energy to instill a culture of continuous improvement. So as Dan North was saying about the you know, the paradigm shift. This, this, at this point, when you have this done, um, it will resonate with everyone the most. So we don't want to keep doing those big technical risky projects again. So use this opportunity to advocate for a better process so you can do small continuous improvements a little bit and often. So to summarize and repeat myself one last time, uh, have a clear business goal for your technical project, uh, define incremental steps with milestones and definitely pick a really cool project name. Be creative in how you communicate your goal and your progress without needing to go into too much technical details. So some of the examples are the red-green diagram and magic wand to represent the now and the desired future. Make the cost of expectation of maintenance, make the cost and expectation of maintenance visible to everyone by doing the application inventory. And use the Bones Muscle Fat framework to review the value of features and potentially reduce the scope of your project to get it done sooner. During it, celebrate all wins, big and small, and get everyone excited by gamifying your progress. Uh, and when you're finishing, celebrate it with everyone and use this opportunity to instill a culture of continuous improvement. Thank you very much.